Hi, today I'm going to tell you a story about the universe, more specifically about the very first simple form of complex matter that ever existed. But for that, we need to go back in time, back to the microsecond old universe, right after the Big Bang. Rewind time. During this time, the temperature of the universe was around 10 trillion Kelvin. That's hot. That's a billion times hotter than the temperature of the Sun. In fact, the temperature was so high that even particles like protons and neutrons couldn't be formed. They would literally melt and only the fundamental particles that constitute them would remain. By fundamental particles, I mean quarks and gluons. These particles interact through one of the four fundamental interactions in nature, which is called the strong interaction. Together with the weak and electromagnetic interaction, we have what is nowadays called the standard model of particle physics. The standard model of particle physics is a beautiful theory that describes every fundamental interaction in nature, except gravity. Each fundamental interaction has a huge field of physics dedicated to study it, and as such, the field responsible for the strong interaction is called quantum chromodynamics, for short, QCD. QCD is about the study of color, yes, color, but not the color you're probably thinking. Color in this context should be taken to be a set of labels named red, green and blue, and has nothing to do with the visible wavelength of light. QCD is an asymptotic free gauge theory, and these are basically fancy terms to say that the strong interaction becomes weaker as the energy increases. When we look at low energy scales like the ones in our daily lives, quarks and gluons are always confined inside composite particles called hadrons, like the proton. However, if we increase the energy, let's say, to the levels of the microsecond old universe, these quarks and gluons can behave as free particles and therefore form the hot medium that filled the universe early on. This medium is called quark-gluon plasma and luckily we can reproduce it in laboratory doing heavy ion collisions. Like almost any experiment in particle physics, we smash particles together in big accelerators and see what comes out. Heavy ion collisions are no different, but instead of smashing two peas at each other, we smash two bulldozers together. The energy and particle density in these collisions is so high that a nearly perfect fluid of QCD matter is formed in the overlap area of the collision. This fluid then expands and cools until the quarks and gluons are again confined inside hadrons and eventually reach the detectors. Sadly, we can't directly measure this medium since all we have access are the hadrons that reach the detectors. Therefore, all measurements are made indirectly using different probes generally called soft and hard probes whose modification can tell us information on the medium in which they have propagated. For the sake of this work, we shall focus on one type of hard probes called jets. After a hard scattering, highly energetic particles are produced, and during their propagation, they radiate other particles like gluons or quarks into a cone-shaped shower that will spread over the detectors. This means we'll have clusters of particles in different regions of the detectors that will allow us to reconstruct the entire shower into a single object, which is the so-called jet. When a jet passes through a medium, such as the quark-gluon plasma, it may lose energy, forward momentum, or even gain momentum transverse to its original direction. These are called quenching effects, and are strong indicators of the presence of this fluid. So far, these quenching effects were only seen in heavy ion collisions. However, other fluid behavior indicators like angular anisotropies were detected in smaller systems, like a collision between a proton and a lead ion or even a collision between two protons. This started a lot of new discussions, in which people argued that in these smaller systems, tiny droplets of quark-gluon plasma can indeed be formed, and therefore explain all the fluid-like behavior we see in the results. However, for this view to be possible, we should also be able to see quenching effects, and so far, we have not. This is where I come in. My master thesis consists in simulating these collisions and find observables that will let us know if jet quenching effects are indeed present or not in small systems. This is a crucial step towards knowing if quark gluon plasma can be formed in these systems, and if yes, a lot of new questions are opened, like how small can a system be to produce quark gluon plasma? What is the energy necessary to produce it? Maybe future accelerators like the Electron Heavy Ion Accelerator or even the new results from the higher luminosity run of the LHC can help us answer these questions. But for now, I shall find evidence if quark gluon plasma is indeed formed or not in small systems. Thank you.